I went to class, and uh, when they were asking uh, how many people have motorcycles, naturally I raised my hand. And so then he said, um, so how long have, you know, everybody been riding? So people were saying a year, two yeah. years, whatever. So he points at me, and I said, I've never <laughs> ridden a motorcycle. <laughs> he said, but you say you have one. I said, yeah, I just bought it a few days ago. <laughs> I said, because I know I want to ride. So he said, now that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's a rider. That's, yeah. <laughs> you know? that's, so that's how I got started with the motorcycle thing. That's, that's yeah. cool. As a woman, do you feel safe living in an RV and traveling on the road all the time? <laughs> Mostly, yes. <laughs> Mostly, yes. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I've seen a lot of horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got it's Jaws, or it's a cave movie, or it's a <laughs> yeah. You know, I've seen a lot of these movies, and you know, movies are made yeah from something that had happened. Yeah. And we only know that I'm going to put this out there right now because you're also a published author. Yeah. I so am. you um, write books based mm -hmm. on what you know. Yeah, based on what I know, and that's the important thing. If I, you know, whenever I write, I want it to be entertaining. But I also have a habit of teaching something. You know, like... Well, that's good. Like I wrote a book, and um, it was coming up to Thanksgiving, so I decided I would tell everybody how to make sticky buns, you know, in the well, book. Well, I want to read that. I want to <laughs> read that book. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I always try to give a lesson or, or something so that... People can remember. In the description below, you can find the link to Edith's website, blog, her blog. website. Mm -hmm. And you can find all her books and everything on Amazon, Smashwords, mm -hmm. and Barnes & Noble. Back to the question mm -hmm. of do you feel, feel safe on the road? Is, is Basically, there... I do. Um, there are times that you are not really sure because of the environment. You get um, so you just have a gut feeling to yeah, stay or leave. I do because you get, you feel people watching you, and uh, that's the first thing, and then uh, you kind of see them pacing or either they ask you, how many miles do your RV get? I'm a female. Yeah. How the heck do You're I like, know? I don't know, and I don't yeah, care. I, I put gas yeah, in, I and I go. Put gas in right. it. Yeah. <laughs> so that has been a thing, but. I don't linger around places too long that I don't feel comfortable. That's good. So we talked about you being a published author. Do you mostly write fiction, nonfiction, or both? I write both. Both? Mm hmm Yeah. So when did you start writing? Oh, my gosh. Or I've been writing for a long time. <laughs> you know, it, um... Is it, is it improper to ask your age? I know, it's good. It's good. I'm 69. 69. Where did you grow up and did that influence your writing? I grew up in Brunswick, Georgia, which is between Savannah, Georgia, Jacksonville, and the Seven Islands, Jekyll Island, St. Simons Island, and Fort Federica. And, um, you know, we spent a lot of time at the beach, you know, as kids. Beach. And uh, we also did a lot of scouting activities. And we were pretty active in everything there was, lifeguards and all this stuff. But the crazy thing about it was um, none of that really steered me toward anything that I really wanted to do in life. It was something interesting that you did when you were a kid, you know, it's like you did roller skating, you did yeah. bicycle, and you did all this stuff. But as far as thinking about what you wanted to do when you got older, my mother wanted me to be a registered nurse, uh. and I refused. She had, my mom had a kindergarten, and I used to write regulations and instructions for them, permission slips and things like that, uh, so that the kids' parents could sign so they could go on these various trips. That was one thing. The other thing was um, doing resumes and applications for friends. 
And also, I played the organ and the piano. Mm. And I would write lyrics to songs. And that was just something that I played with. But I don't know. I guess it never really dawned on me that I would be a writer. Writing came about because of a dear from my son. You know, uh, I would always have visions and dreams. And when I would wake up, I would tell them something that I dreamed about. And they would be sitting here sometimes like they're not breathing, eyes are really big. <laughs> and I'm like, what? what? You know? <laughs> and they're like, Drunk. oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, she had another one. You know, I mean, that's the yeah. way they would do it. But he um, told me, he says, Mom, he says, you write for USDA. You have written a lot of stuff for other people. You do self-help books. You have been a ghost writer. Why is it you don't write stuff for yourself? And I said, well, I don't have time. I'm always doing all this other yeah. stuff. You're writing for other people. Yeah. And so he said, I think it would be good if you wrote some books. He says, and you know what? You have crazy dreams. He said, I dare you to write a book about it. And on that dare, I started writing. And the first book I wrote was Consequences. And, and that is published, so you can get that. Yeah, that's, that's from, an interesting book. From Edith's website. Yeah, so that was my first book. And then I usually try to write about life. And the biggest thing came to me, I guess, maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Because it seems like all of us are having shattering or breaking apart of families and you know families aren't as close as they used to be yeah and you get to the point that you have to accept the fact that just because you have the same blood as another person it does not make you family it makes you relate it family takes a lot of work. Yeah. And if you don't put in the, the energy and the time, it breaks apart. So, I found that people that come into your life, you never know why they're there, but they are with you and in your life because they want to be. You're not paying them to be there. They are not related to you. But yet and still, some of them function like you are siblings. And that's where you find your friends. Yeah. And to me, that's where you find a part of a family that you ordinarily wouldn't have. Yeah. That's the way I feel in two weeks that we've been, you know, we spent a little bit of time in two weeks and it was like we just hit it off. And yeah. I was just like, like I said, impressed. Yeah. And it was like, I want to get to know this lady. And so that's why I'm Well, part I of was interview. impressed with you guys, too. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, you're the one yeah. that yes. has just shattered everything that I ever thought that women are supposed to know or not know. <laughs> I mean, you're just awesome. Thank you. I mean, the no. stuff that you do. <laughs> this, this is your interview. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, too. Yeah. You know, mm. I was just so amazed by both of you and how friendly you are and how conscientious you are about the things that you do. I swear, I've spent a lot of time at campgrounds. I've never seen a guy on a, a on a lawnmower. <laughs> you know, that's part I, of my job here. Yeah, but I'm, to mow the yard. I've never seen them pull <laughs> trash either. The trash can is running over. You know. Yeah. So you guys have really amazed me. And uh, whether you like it or not, we are RV and sisters. Yes, we are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I know. It's like, yes, we are. <laughs> what would you tell a new inspiring author? Mm. Write what you know. It's being an author 
it's a lonely lifestyle. You're pretty much by yourself a lot. Uh, you're doing a lot of research because you have to remember whatever setting you put that story in, whatever year, you have to be authentic. The telephones have to be in existence, the cell phones yeah. have to be in existence, whatever. You have to remember the whole setting. When you write about something that you know about, you are more passionate about it. You want to express how you feel about it, and you want to share that. So that's what I would tell a new author. All to write what you to know. write what you know. Don't you know? And in all of us, I think there is um, an author in all of us. Because all it comes from is life experiences right. and dreams of folks you know. I used to tell my friends, I said, you're going to be in my next book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, because they do something or say something crazy. Or even if they say something that you don't like, you say, you know what? I'm going to write about you. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's all good. Is there any advice that you would give women that would want to travel full time in an RV? Yeah. I would say. Looks like it's about to storm, so we may have to hurry up this interview. <laughs> I've got quite a few women talking to me about it that, that know me and knew that I sold everything yeah. and walked away. They're looking at a lot of different things because they want the freedom and to be able to do a lot of different things rather than being tied to a stick in a brick house. The only thing that I would say to females is if you think you want to do our event, do it. Life is short. And you don't know if you like something until you do it. You know, so you may end up renting an RV yeah. to try it out, which they are very expensive to rent, but... But then you'd know if you, you even would want know to if ride. you want to do it. That's, that's um, good advice. You know, um, to me, if you really think you want to do nature, try primitive camping. You know, there's usually a lot of people around. They're great places to, to visit and to see. Yeah. And I feel like it's, uh, you know how you stick that toe in the water yeah. for the first time? Just you kind of wave through just a little bit. Yeah, kind of give you a feel. Do you have a bucket list of things you want to do? And if you do, what are they? Or give me just two or I had to change my bucket list. My bucket list was to get this RV. Yeah and to visit every state and, and uh, national park throughout the whole U.S. I spent my first 14 days at Cedar Hill State Park. <laughs> Cost me $440. <laughs> I decided, no. <laughs> no. I probably won't do yeah. state parks. But so in, right now you're on a BLM land. Yeah. And I love BLM properties, which is what Bureau of Land Management. And what I like about it is it's a lot like primitive camping. But the best part is you stay for 14 days for free. Yep. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's like you won the lottery. Yep. Yeah. I know. So, and you meet the, the best people. So, I really like that. Well, Edith, I just have loved this interview and spending time with you and getting to spend two weeks with you, which wasn't very long. And we're going to see each other on the road again. Is that correct? That's correct. Give me a hug. <laughs> you don't have to get up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know. You don't have to get up. Okay.